All right, so this uh, screencast is linked to um, tutorial number one or laboratory number one, which is loosely based on lecture series number five, computer software. Um, and specifically, we're just going to walk through uh, a few steps that should help get us started so that we're able to work through questions number two and number three. Um, and essentially the questions number two and three are all centered around actually yeah, two and three are all centered around, uh, two, three, and four, rather, are centered around the use of um, VirtualBox, which is nothing more than uh, a hypervisor, right? So it allows you um, to sort of like uh, create virtual machines um, on top of an already existing or within um, a machine that already has an operating system installed. So in the event that you are, say, running Windows, you can install a hypervisor such as uh, VirtualBox and, and then be able to install um, other auxiliary operating systems on top of an already existing operating system, which is quite helpful in instances where you want to try out, let's say, pieces of software, for instance, that uh, are meant to run on different types of operating systems. And it turns out it's it's um, one of those mostly wide used uh, techniques for people that develop cross-platform applications or other applications that they would want to port to different types of operating system software, um, operating systems rather. So, right, and just to mention that uh, two things about VirtualBox, um, it's what's referred to as a type two hypervisor. Uh, so a type one hypervisor runs um, on top of the actual native hardware, but a type two hypervisor such as VirtualBox will run on top of um, an existing operating system. Uh, so one prerequisite for VirtualBox and the class of software that um, uh, the same as VirtualBox is that you must have what's referred to as a host operating system available. So you must make sure that your computer already has an operating system installed. That operating system will be or will provide the host environment and then the operating systems that you install within VirtualBox will be uh, guest operating systems. Uh, so something else worth mentioning about VirtualBox is the fact that it's not necessarily the only hypervisor that's available out there. There's a slew of them. Um, so classic examples that you probably run into online as you're searching, and I do encourage you to search online uh, uh, software tools such as um, uh, VMware, for instance, right? Uh, all right, so on with it. Uh, but also a reminder here that because it runs on top of a uh, host operating system, then obviously VirtualBox is um, application software. Great, so for you to get started, what you want to do is you want to, you can either go to Google and just search for Oracle VirtualBox, or just search for VirtualBox. And then you should be, the first link should be a link to the homepage where you'll be able to download the software. Um, so what you notice immediately is that uh, VirtualBox is actually free, free to download, right? So it's freely available. You don't have to pay money or licensing fees for you to access it. Uh, no need to worry about uh, cracked versions of the software because it's available for free. And then more importantly, it's also open source. Now you notice that all these things are linked to some of the discussions that we had when we discussed computer software. Um, this open source, this free and open source tag is closely linked to the last unit that we discussed, which was copyright and licensing, essentially. All right, uh, so when you go to the homepage and you click this big download button, uh, what you notice is that there's, there's actually uh, versions of VirtualBox available for most of the popular operating system. So you, you can, in the event that you're running Windows on your machine, uh, unlike Lighton who's running Linux here, uh, there's, there's, a, there's actually a link where you get to download uh, um, software specific to Windows. If you're running Linux, you should be able to access the link um, on, the, on the homepage itself. Okay, the downloads page of the homepage. Great, so assuming you successfully install a piece of software. So installing this piece of software shouldn't really be difficult. Just follow through with the instructions on Windows. Excuse me. Uh, the default options are always fine. So just click next, next, next until you successfully install the application. And once you install the piece of application, you should be able to access it, right? So what you notice, right, is that um, once you open up VirtualBox, you are typically going to be presented by, by this interface here, right? It may not be exactly as you're seeing it here just because I'm running this on uh, on Ubuntu, uh, but but it shouldn't really be 
shouldn't really be that different from what you're seeing right now. All right, so very basic interface. You have a menu item here where you, you get to access some really nifty features. What we are interested in for now is uh, to be able to create a new virtual machine. And the process I'm going to walk you through will involve us installing uh, Ubuntu version, and it's not version 18. It's going to involve us installing Ubuntu version version 20.0.4. should change this. Uh, right, 20.0.4, uh, which which I've already downloaded myself. Uh, if I can just get to it. Okay, if we just get to... Great, so I've already downloaded this, and and uh, it's, it's a relatively large file, so you want to make sure that you you have sufficient bandwidth before you do this. Uh, if we were on campus, it was going to be relatively easier because uh, we've actually made available these ISO images on the DC hub. Um, but in the event that you have access to a reliable internet connection and you have sufficient uh, data bundles, what you want to do is you want to to go to, uh, it says Ubuntu download, you want to go to um, the Ubuntu homepage, right? And just download a copy of 20.0.4. Uh, okay, so all you have to do is just go to this URL here and then download um, the ISO image. Um, so once you have, once you download VirtualBox and you successfully install it and you have downloaded the ISO image, the process that you go through for you to be able to install um, Ubuntu 20.0.4 would involve you just clicking the new button and then you follow through the instructions. And um, the instructions are quite simple really. So the, the first pop-up window here uh, allows you to specify a name associated with this virtual machine that you're creating. Um, and as a rule of thumb, what I do myself is I just uh, pretty much uh, give it a name of the operating system and the corresponding version that I'm installing. So in this case, it's Ubuntu.20.0.4. Right, uh, 20.04, 20 20.0.4, 20 it doesn't matter. Um, so the drop down, the drop down menu here allows you to specify or to select the type of operating system that you're installing. Right. So in the event that you you decide to go through this process to install some obscure version of Windows, then you choose Microsoft Windows. But because we're installing Ubuntu, we choose Linux because Ubuntu happens to be a variant of Linux. Um, what I have downloaded is 64-bit version of Ubuntu, um, right, AMD 64 there. And so uh, under version, you want to make sure that you choose 64-bit, not 32-bit, right? Uh, so just create that. And then you just go next. Avoid the expert mode, right? You just want to go, to, you go with the default mode here. Just click next. Um, on the part where you specify the memory size, it gives you an opportunity to specify how much RAM you want to allocate to your virtual machine. Now, the choice of how much RAM you need to allocate to this virtual machine is dependent on two key factors. So number one, the piece of operating system software that you're installing would typically have corresponding minimum requirements, right? So that's one aspect. The other aspect is the amount of resources that you have available on your machine. Um, so in my case, I have 12 gigabytes of RAM available on my machine. Uh, if I can just quickly do that to show you what I mean here. You notice that I have uh, I have about 20, 20 GB of RAM available on my machine. So I can get away with allocating maybe four um, or even slightly more um, uh, gigabytes so maybe four, this is one, so I'll just have to move it to, to 1084. So it's 1084 by four, right? So I'm just 490, 1496. I'm just going to move it to 1496 here. So that I allocate four, I'm, I'm allocating four gigabytes of RAM to, to this virtual machine. Maybe that's reaching. Okay, pause for a little while. Let me just check to see what the requirements are here. Uh, 
like uh, see if we can find the details of the requirements of this piece of maybe under release notes or something <laughs> that's that, that was stupid I apologize the requirements are here so you notice that the recommended right system requirements is um, if in, in terms of memory here it's 4 GB right but this is recommended it's, it's not really like it's the minimum uh, I don't know if they have uh, details of what minimum requirements this thing has let's just say RAM memory fair enough we'll just have to uh, Ubuntu 20. Dot, not dot 4 minimum requirements. Hopefully, we'll be able to get to what we want to search for. But this, this is a tag that's being, uh, this is a tag that's being recommended, not minimum, which is a bit weird here. I'm trying to see if I can find a place where someone will talk about the uh, minimum requirements it turns out it's 4 gb of ram anyway so okay that's fine we'll go with the flow so you want to make sure that you have sufficient ram in my case i do i have 12 so i'm i'm going to allocate four uh four 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 gb uh of the 12 that i have so that's about uh, 30 percent of my my memory to this virtual machine right uh, the next window allows me to uh, to configure the hard disk, right? So remember, this is a virtual machine, so it's it's more or less like we are creating an environment to simulate how a computer hardware would work, right? In, in an ideal case, if uh, you were to think of what we're going through right now in relation to an actual piece of hardware, the memory would be a physical component, right? Um, the hard disk would actually be a physical component, but in this case, because we are wanting to create a virtual machine, all of this is is, is just virtual. It's actually not physical, right? We we are creating all these things on the software layer itself. So we specify the hardware, right? The recommended size here is saying 10 GB. We'll go with 10 GB, which should be fine. Um, and uh, um, so I will just say create, right? All right. Um, and then here you just uh, get to specify, uh, you get to specify the type of uh, hard disk file that you want to create. Again, just go with the default here. Um, won't get into the gory details of what the fundamental differences are for this, but just go with the VDI, which is fine. Um, click next. And then in terms of storage space, uh, you have the option of specifying whether you want this to be dynamically allocated or to be of a fixed size. Um, so the, the the thing with the dynamically allocated uh, hard disk is that it grows as you are making use of the virtual machine, as you are adding things to the virtual machine within the virtual machine itself. The fixed size, on the other hand, will pre-allocate space or will reclaim space on, on your machine and allocate it to the virtual machine. I normally go with dynamical allocated just because I mostly use this for experimentation. Um, all right, so you notice here that uh, I'm specifying the location, right? Uh, please, is it? Okay, so this, is, so this is just the name of, of the, the name of the, of the of the hard disk that I've just created, right? So I'll just go with the default and then just say create. All right, so now that I've created it, um, now that you've created it, which is why you have it appear on the left panel here, you you get to click on the start button. Um, and then when you click on the start button, it will allow you to, a pop-up window will come up, which allows you to specify where the ISO image um, of the corresponding operating system you want to install is located. You, so you want you want to make sure that you already have the ISO image downloaded, right? Remember at this point, we haven't yet installed the operating system. Uh, we are going, we, we've just prepared the, um, the environment that simulates the hardware where the operating system is going to be installed, right? Uh, so by default, it assumes that you're, you're going to install this piece of operating system 
um, software of this operating system from uh, your CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive, right? Uh, but in, in our case, uh, we are working with this ISO image, so it's downloaded ISO images on the hard disk of the host machine or host operating system. So click this button at, uh, at the, oh shoot, just do that here. So you click the, the, the button at the far right side of that pop-up window and then just navigate where your ISO image is. You notice here that I have it located right there and then I'll just say uh, start here. Um, and then I'll start going through a process, installation process of uh, this piece of um, this piece of operating system. Now, if you've installed Ubuntu before, what you immediately realize is that what you're seeing on the screen here is what you you'd, you'd actually see if you were installing Ubuntu um, uh, on your actual uh, hardware, right? And, and not within a virtual, a virtual machine or a virtual environment that you just created. Um, so you just wait for it. Um, and then you should be able to go through the, uh, the installation process. And again, the installation process for Ubuntu is pretty trivial. There's nothing complex about it. Um, all you have to do is follow through with the instructions. Uh, at certain points, you want to make sure that you pause and read through um, the fine print associated with that particular step, just so you don't make a mistake. But the beauty with the virtual machine is that in the event uh, in the event that you make a mistake, you can always purge it, you delete it completely, and then you restart the whole process from scratch. Um, I do this very often. So uh, before I, before this particular process, I had to clean up uh, the previous operating system op operating system software that I had configured as, as virtual machines on my machine. So I had Windows Windows 10 or something. I had Ubuntu 18.0.4. I had Android x86, right? Uh, and I, I could literally get away with just deleting them because I know that installing them or reinstalling them is a very trivial process. All right, so um, you should be able to get to this stage where you, if I can just, just uh, all right, so you have this window here that, uh, if I can just close these things here, cool stuff. So, Oh my goodness, this thing. So you have this, this window here that uh, has two options. The first option is try Ubuntu. The try Ubuntu option allows you to test the operating system without necessarily installing it, right? Um, and then the install Ubuntu will actually install this uh, piece of software within the virtual environment. Well, it's, which, if you think about this, it's a really nifty feature, right? So you can try out the operating system without necessarily installing it and if you're happy with it then you go ahead and install it but click the the install option and just make sure you choose English there um, and then just follow through with the um, the installation instructions that are going to pop up window after window right so there are a couple of steps that you're going to have to go through so the usual things like uh, uh, trying to figure out what sort of uh, keyboard you're using as part of your machine right uh, so I'll just say detect, uh, so I'll just pause here. All right, so, sorry about that, I had to pick up a call. So uh, what I was saying for this particular step, what you want to do is uh, just make sure that you, you confirm that you've configured the correct uh, keyboard layout. Um, so I'm just going to uh, follow through with the instructions here. Um, and just answer this, so no, this is not available, this is not available, not available. Um, so, so what Ubuntu is doing here is uh, uh, based on the input that I'm, I'm, I'm providing it, it's going to uh, automatically configure my keyboard layout. Okay, so it's detected it as being uh, English, yes, um, and then I'll say continue. And at any point in time, you can always go back or you can quit this installation process and restart from scratch. Um, just go with the normal installation. And then for now, just uh, just say, and tick the download updates while installing Ubuntu just, uh, just, just because the entire process is going to run at a much faster rate if you avoid the downloads of these updates. You can always um, update the 
installation once you're done with the installation process. So just make sure everything else is unticked and go with the normal installation. Uh, so I'll just say next. All right, so this uh, you, you don't have to be um, to be apprehensive about this. The the option here, the warning here would would only be applicable if you were installing it on the um, on the actual hardware and not within a virtual environment. So it, it's it's just giving you a heads up to say if you choose this option, um, everything that is currently on the disk is going to be erased. And remember, our, our disk in this case would be the disk environment that is associated with the virtual, uh, the virtual machine that we've created here. So it doesn't necessarily affect anything that's installed on the host um, operating system. And I'll just say install now. Um, and then again, it's um, asking for confirmation because uh, everything that previously was existing on this particular disk is going to be erased. But again, this is the virtual environment. So I'll just say continue. It should be fine. You probably would be worried if you had a pre-existing virtual machine um, uh, and you were foolishly saving data on that virtual machine. I'm, I'm saying foolishly here because you don't want to do that, right? Uh, all right, and then you just wait for uh, for Ubuntu to do its thing. Uh, let's just wait for it. Incidentally, this is the first time I'm actually installing um, uh, 20.0.4, so really looking forward to taking it for a spin okay again here uh, i guess this is mostly associated with uh, time zones and whatnot so just uh, leave lusaka here right and just say continue um and then you just give it um, give it a name right this is this would be your name um, ideally if you notice as you're typing your name ict 1110 um, it's automatically suggesting a username that is going to be associated with this um, installation of Ubuntu and also the computer name itself. But you can always change these things if you want to change them. In my case, the default is always fine. Um, I'll choose the password. Uh, uh, and then I'll just say next. All right, um, and then you just uh, sit back, uh, maybe drink some tea or coffee, and wait for Ubuntu to, to, uh, to do to do its thing, really. Um, so we're just going to wait for it to finish the installation processes. It normally takes um, a bit of time. I'm not quite sure how long 20.0.4 is going to take, but let's wait and see. I will probably, uh, I'll probably fast forward. Um, I'll speed up this, this particular segment of the screencast at some stage. All right. I guess I might also just do something as I wait for this. Great, so clearly the installation process is um, complete. And what I'm going to do is just follow through the instructions and just say restart. Um, and then we should be able to, to be able to access the, the Ubuntu 20.0.4 guest operating system. Um, 
So what you just saw there, the message that says, please remove the installation media is the standard. Um, so in the event that you were booting from um, a CD-ROM drive, what you'd have to do is make sure that the, 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 uh, the storage medium is actually removed from the drive itself before you boot into the installed operating system. Uh, just a little while longer and we should be able to access Ubuntu. So if you notice with the the other um, the other tasks of the other tasks associated with this particular uh, tutorial question, so that's question number two and three, um, it's it's actually requesting that we 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 gain access to uh, system settings and other utility tools just so that we have a feel of um, the type of utility software applications that are associated with Ubuntu. Uh, and, and incidentally, one of the reasons why we, we, we historically have decided to adopt Ubuntu is subsequent discussions that are linked to um, software tools, for instance, uh, normally use Linux as, as a case, we normally use Linux as a case example. So for instance, once we get to a stage where we start looking at um, uh, typical operations that are performed on computer storage, um, uh, secondary storage, uh, whatever you want to call it, we, we tend to use application tools that are specific to Linux. And in this case, it's Ubuntu. Um, although really does it, the choice of tool is not really important, right? What's, what's I'm wondering why this thing is taking long. It shouldn't take that long. We can just give it a little more time. Um, if it turns out like that it's stalling, then I'll just have to close this and hope that once we start the machine, it should be able to uh, to boot into Ubuntu, which is the installed application. Just a little while longer. Okay. I'm not sure if uh, it has anything to do with the wound, but I'll just close this and then hope that uh, I'll save the state and I'll just send the shutdown signal and then I'll try and see if I can get into Ubuntu because the installation is done, obviously. Uh, so let's just wait and see if it's going to work. Should be able to, hopefully. It's such a shame if it fails to. Let's see if I can close this. Let's pause it off. All right, so here's to hoping I've managed to install it. Um, I think we sh should have managed to install it. Um, you can pretty much check the settings associated with this virtual machine by going down to the storage, for instance. There we go. Um, what else can we do? System settings, we see it's 4 GB. Um, of RAM allocated to this virtual machine. And something else we can do is we can we can actually try and not try, we can actually go to, we can go to the default location where VirtualBox normally um, organizes files associated with this virtual machines to see if, if we've actually installed this machine. Clearly we have six GB, we have, I think. If we go in here, you notice that uh, we actually have those files that we had specified as well. If you notice, uh, this one of the specifications we made was that the the disk itself um, would have to dynamically grow in size. So even though we said would would reserve 10 GB of space for this particular um, virtual machine, but because we specified dynamic rather than fixed size. Um, currently, the installation has occupied uh, 6.4 GB of space. So the remaining space is space that would um, would get to use as, as we are playing around with the machine. So just say start, and hopefully we should be able to log into Ubuntu.
come on there we go exciting um excited because i haven't really played around with uh, 20.0.4 so really keen to see exactly uh, how much of 18.0.4 has changed so just to kind of explain what I mean here my host operating system uh, yeah. my host operating system oh that's weird my host operating system runs um, 18.0.4 right um, <coughs> but we have just installed in this virtual machine 20.0.4 uh, so Really keen to see. Let's just see. Let's see. Oh, let's clean this up. Okay, so if you notice the login prompt just uh, just showed up here, right? And uh, all we have to do is just uh, click this username to login, um, and then specify the password. then um, when we log in we should have access to our fresh installation of uh, ubuntu version Alright, so these these are the default settings. Here is uh, what you you need to do if you had actually installed a uh, wound on your machine. Like you can connect your Google account if you want to. I'll just say skip here. Um, this is weird actually. Previous versions, uh, I I know uh, the Ubuntu single sign sign on has been around for quite some time, but in previous versions, I never really had to uh, to go through this process. It gives you an idea of just how how connected we've become right as a species uh, or how important um, cloud services have actually begun have actually become now um, if, if you have an operating system integrated with these nifty features it just goes to show the importance of this uh, so I'll just skip this just because it's um, <coughs> it's not important right now and uh, what else here Help improve Ubuntu. Okay, I'll just say send system info, which is fine. I don't care. Uh, it's not like I'm private. I am privacy, privacy conscious, but okay. So we're ready to go. They just say done. Great. So this is our freshly installed version of uh, of Ubuntu, right? And um, so if you remember this pop-up is there because at some stage the installation instructions actually um, required that we download updates during the installation pro process but we ignored that which is why it's uh, it's prompting us to up install these updates so i'll just say remind later just because it's not that important and what's well, pretty nice looking feature here pretty different from 18.0.4 okay so this is this is it this is ubuntu.10 and and then uh, you can once you successfully install the uh, the OS, what you can do is you can try and see if you can explore device management. You can install these other utility tools like uh, system settings. And then from system, system settings, you actually have a nice, hopefully, you have a nice interface that, um, I'll just search for settings. There we go. You have um, a pretty nice interface that allows you to explore the various utility tools that you have access to. Right, so things like... Uh, this would be like your uh, so specific hardware configuration details, right? Uh, printers. Um, let's see what we have under applications here. Uh, okay. So you can configure uh, the behavior of your mouse and your touchpad, for instance. 
Um, I'm, I'm trying to see if we can find a monitor. There we go. We can check our system monitor just so we can analyze the performance of uh, the performance of our computer. Uh, if, you, if you remember, one of the key uh, threats of utility software tools is it's used for um, monitoring the computer system, analyzing and monitoring the computer system. So analyzing the usage of resources here clearly. Uh, so processes here uh, uh, have very nice visual representation of processor usage and uh, how your memory is being used as well, and the network in this case. All right, uh, so hopefully you should be able to work through this. Um, once you manage to do this, the plan is for you to install Windows and then try and play around with uh, utility software tools specific to Windows. And I don't know if we are reaching, but uh, we also thought it would be it would be nice if you could uh, play around with uh, x86 version of Android. So it's a port of the Android operating system, essentially. All right, great. Uh, if there are any issues, just send me out to the mail.